The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. I think I figured this out, finally. Technology and me, we are one and the same. But I look really close today, oddly close. Let's just go ahead and back that up a little bit. That's a little better. And we'll just, uh, we'll go that way. You know what, it's not the end of the world. Worst things in life, I guess, right? Right, it kinda happens, it's okay. Still working out, you know, little kinks are in there. But that's the way it goes. That's kind of how life is. Uh, how's everyone doing? Hope everyone's uh, doing great. Getting everything up and running here. Still figuring out how to do uh, StreamYard. Um, but all is good. So let's see here. Ooh, that's where the comments are. Okay. Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen. Hey. Thank you for uh, hanging with me. And everyone else that's uh, uh, hanging with me. Um, hopefully, we are live on the multiple different platforms. Holy smokes, we are. Check this out. I think I figured this out. Oh, look at me. Ah. Uh, wait, go that way. Uh, live. Live on Twitch. We're doing some stuffs. I'm liking this. Pretty sweet. Right, pretty sweet. All right. So, welcome. Week two, walk the line. Ramona and I today. Ramona is uh, currently in route. Um, as always, that is one busy guy. Karen, as you know, extremely busy. And I think I just knife handed Karen, so I'll pay for that later. Um, more than willing to bet that I will pay for that later. Uh, you never knife hand Karen. It's uh, not a good idea. It's not an American Karen, it's a Canadian Karen, so let's not freak out here, people. Um, but today we are going to discuss Ramon's genius idea of walking from Los Angeles, California to Washington, D.C. It's a brilliant idea. We're going to talk why he's doing it, the logistics behind it, and, uh, of course, his physical preparation, because not gonna lie, he was uh, not exactly prepared the last time when he did his walk um, from San Diego to, uh, is it Brownsville, Texas, I believe it is? I think that's, I think it's Brownsville, Texas. It sounds like it's correct. Whoa! All right, that one everywhere on uh, all those different uh, platforms. Cool, I like it. Julie, welcome. How are you? Hope everything's well. Can everybody hear me just fine? Right, we're still working out, you know, all the stuff that's going on. But, uh, you know, we're going to get there. We're going to figure this out whenever my uh, little partner logs in. It was kind of interesting figuring. Uh, I was like, oh, no. Where's the intro video? Couldn't find it. Uh, I eventually found it. It was a good thing. So, yes. Uh, hope everyone is well. I think I said that. Uh, looking here over at the comments. So it looks like I can only see Facebook's comments, I think. Maybe if somebody has comments from... Uh, uh, what's going on there, devil? It's a good name. Sounds great. Whoa, Jamie. Not to be confused with, uh, well, she spells her name in a fantastic manner. Not to be confused with uh, uh, Jaime, but it's Jamie. It's not Jaime. In case anyone was wondering. Good. Glad we have clarified that. 
me see last message here to Ramon uh, he has the link uh, where is oh he you know what he's doing because he's trying to be all fashionable he's probably getting his gold microphone he, he's he's upstaging me don't like it don't like it not really that's not true but we got my my handy dandy microphone Wait, let's ready to go ah, I'm just gonna leave it be uh, I try to be funny I'm not very funny so let's kick this thing off. Uh, Ramon will be here in a second anyway. Uh, Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. It's a long walk. It's an extremely long walk. Um, as a matter of fact, I've got right here in front of me. Let's kind of uh, map this out for a second. Let's just go straight shot. Capitol Hill uh, from uh, Los Angeles to Washington, D.C see what we get here so from my location I'm about an hour away from uh, Los Angeles we're gonna oh it does not give me walking directions come on now that's horrible what if I do it on a bike uh, it doesn't give me bike directions either but it does give me train all right so we're gonna do this by car here oh I heard a ding that means Ramon is here um, but from where I'm at in Southern California all the way to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., we're looking at uh, 2,633 miles. And, uh, well, this guy here is going to uh, pull this off somehow, some way. Ramon. Hey. What's going on? Let's see. Not much, I man. think I'm liking this look. There we go. That's a little. I'm loving the gold microphone. See, look at us work out the kinks. Right. I'm going to have to buy you one, even if it's just for looks right now. I'm, gonna I'm just going to spray paint one at this point. <laughs> I just want to, I mean, because I am, I'm not going to lie, I am a microphone snob. Um, yeah. This makes it look official, like we actually know what we're doing. <laughs> Someone's got to know what they're doing. I don't know. Well, it's not me, I'll tell you that. It's um, it's far from being me. Um, it's far from being you. I don't know yeah. about that. So, uh, Julie says, hello, Ramon. Oh, and hey, I, you know what? Are you? I can. Uh, let, me get a light. let me get a light in here. Let me bring my boy in. Tell my that. boy. In here. See, I can post some comments. We're f we're gonna talk serious topics and we're gonna be funny at the same time. Add a little humor. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Uh, some uh, <laughs> we we do need the audience participation here, though. Don't bet you. Got see what's up, there, dog? Yeah, I know. We uh, we had a chat about. Uh, you know, maybe because, I mean, veterans issues or, right, serious mm -hmm. topic. But we got to be a little lighthearted because there's just so many depressing subjects on the Internet because that's what we do. We want to be apparently depressed, I guess. Um, that's not true. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think people just have to be ready because it's a uh, one of those uh, times when, you know, we get into our sense of humor. It's a little dark sometimes. <laughs> it is very dark. But we have learned last week that Ramon is a karaoke fan. <laughs> yeah. I'm a musician. We got to figure out how we can like each show maybe as this thing goes. Like try and weave that in there, right? Like maybe pick some songs and see what Ramon will do. I don't know. Something like that. It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I'm only mostly into uh, Mexican music. I get down. Does that mean to a you're gonna mariachi. dance too? Yeah, I do. I mean, mariachi. <laughs> I'm totally gonna hire a mariachi band because I will not do that justice. You bring that in here, and I will tear it up, man. Trumpet. I'll probably go for. Probably find the new profession if you get me that. I mean, I'm. I think I'm that good. If this it's political thing doesn't work out, I mean, you do have a future as a mariachi uh, singer. <laughs> I, oh boy i learned in the last week that radio is a marine ninja turtle yeah was that when we were doing the bar yeah that's when we were doing the bar and i told that funny story about how i flailed like a turtle while being shot at <laughs> yeah um, all right i'll tell the story real fast so basically what happens is the day i got injured we were in a very long firefight uh so after like two hours of laying in the prone position with all this gear on, uh, I see a guy puts an RPK up on the burn, crawls up behind it. I'm like, yeah, it's on. 
And like two other guys follow suit. Cool. We're like 600 yards from them. I stand up. Inevitably, they see me because can't miss the gigantic antenna. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, he, oh, we can hear. Look, what the hell is. Wow. So That's don't impressive. tell Ernie that I still have this. No, 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 no. Ernie will never know. He hates me for it. Still have uh, this. He brought a bunch of his equipment. <laughs> and uh, he kept it here. And we've been using it at our. Um, you know, as needed, so obviously it's not in the same shape as it was. So, oh, whatever's um, going on in the background. Yeah, it's just the phone going off. Um, yeah, it happens. Yeah, so it makes him very, 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 very upset to know that I have his equipment and I haven't bought him a new one to replace that one. So. <laughs> oh, I buy well, all his uh, shirts. I buy all his shirts. Really? That's dedication right there. And they're expensive, but they are good quality. I haven't bought a, the last two. I wore I his shirts for my walk. Quality uh, and quantity, that's for sure. Yeah, man. So I wore my shirts. Uh, I wore his. I wore his shirts that I paid for. Okay. Uh, you know, on some of the big events that we did uh, during the walk. Okay. Um, and then I so I told them the last time we were doing a parade, right? And I was the headliner for that float. And I said, "Hey, man, hook it up with some shirts. I mean, let me uh, let me wear one of your shirts so I can uh, help promote it." And he's like, "Yeah, man, I'll, I'll sell you one. I'll sell you a couple." And I said, "No, man, that's not the way that's this works." Funny as hell, and actually. He, he was. You're just. He said, "You're just trying to scam me for a shirt." And I'm like, <laughs> "Ernie did, cheap bastard." Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome, by the way. Um, you worry can that we? I was can we point out? Wait, what was I going to say? Uh, oh. Did you get your, uh, do you have your parade float wave down? Like, did you have to work on that? No, like so I wrapped thing? myself up with like a little rag or something and uh, a walk that I put on my shades and I walk real cool. And we had uh, shirts and candies and stuff like that. So we were just kind of tossing them out. So it was cool. <laughs> this is my hometown. Everybody knows what's up. I can't Everyone knows who you are. You could just go down yeah. to the parade float in your pajamas and you're, you're good to go. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, story. Um, so, stand up, right? <laughs> a squirrel moment right there. So, I stand up. Inevitably, I'm the first one to get shot at. And then I immediately hit the ground. And my team chief was like a couple feet away from me. He's still laying in the prone position. And he goes, Radio, you dead? And I go, Nope, but that was close. <laughs> and so then I try to, like, you know, recon, slide down this little berm that we we're on. Except I, uh, I, I, gracefully kind of rolled and I did a little combat roll with my radio and all this stuff and I combat rolled myself into a rut and I just so happened to land on my back with my radio bag in the rut and uh well so there's a problem I weighed at that time 165 pounds with all of my gear on, I weighed like 310, 315, give or take. It's a lot of weight. I couldn't get the hell up. I tried, but I was like stuck. And I'm screaming for my team chief, Hakame! Ha! And it's loud, everyone's shooting. I'm screaming for him to, you know, get me the roll hell up. Over. And he, uh, yeah, like roll me over or something. Like just point me in the right direction again. But instead, he does his little cool guy slide and makes it look all nice and cool. And instead of getting me up, he reaches into his vest and he pulls out a camera. And I'm flailing like this. <laughs> I can't get the hell up. And he's like, hold on. And he takes a picture of me. So somewhere in the world exists a picture of me flailing like a turtle <laughs> while getting shot at. And then I think we all experience the situation with those uh those alice packs i don't know what were they called when you were in oh were no alice? i had a custom uh built uh radio bag for oh, so right. mine was like a day pack that i had a bunch of stuff just custom built to it so i could uh carry a bunch of crap um which is uh yeah because well yeah i mean why not right um but uh so yeah, yeah, it, it was bad, it was bad. Um, yeah, really, I mean, just. 
I mean, yeah. I could just imagine, you know, the, that whole scenario. If it happened to me out in Camp Pendleton, and I can imagine if it happened to me in combat or in any other situation where, you know, you can't, I mean, it was just one of those things, right? And you can't roll one way. You can't roll the other. You can't, you know, you can't bend forward. I don't know too many people strong enough to do a sit-up with one of those on their back. <laughs> uh, there was no way that was happening. I was like, just, it was that moment where I was perfectly wedged, you know, and I guess that's kind of like my payback for what I get. Uh, when I was laughing my ass off a few days prior to that, when Huckabee fell into a river and I <laughs> wouldn't get him out. I just was laughing at him the whole time. Like he was just walking where it's like middle of the night. We're doing our little like cool just so people know, when you're doing like some sort of op, you're trying to be all sneaky. Like, all right, here we go. We're being sneaky because we're the cool guys. Who, who and, is MVG? Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, he just, I had my MVGs on. I had these PBS 15s. I have full depth perception. And all of a sudden, Huckabee's walking. And then he was just gone. And I'm like, what the? And he like fell into like this sinkhole and then dropped into this river. And I was just dying laughing. Turned on all yeah. light, like all discipline goes out the door. Like, oh, people are going to see us now. And I, he's like, get me out. And I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. And it's like 30 degrees out. We were there in the wintertime, so he's freezing. It was great. Good times. Uh, and suddenly I have, wait, what's Julie say here? And suddenly I have a vision of a heap of people rolling around like turtles. Yep. Prior service. U.S. Air Force and Army Reserve, Illinois Army Guard. That's awesome. MD, I can't see the. I wish I could see more, but I, all we can see is just a little, you know, the profile picture and a comment yeah. with their name. Uh, so cool. the prior service, uh, U.S. Air Force well, Reserve and Army be, Reserve. We will be walking the line through Illinois, uh, right through the southern part, and I'm thinking just today when we were chatting this morning that we can peel off. And have our caravan caravan drive us up to Chicago for a rally. If we can coordinate that, I would love to, you know, hold something in, in uh, downtown Chicago. And it's just, I love that city to begin with. But yeah, we will be, uh, the plan is to cut through Illinois. Um, and that's the correct way to say it, right? Uh, yo, you're in Texas. Illinois. Oh, oh geez, Texas oh, is my, okay. Oh. You travel for drill weekend all the way up to Illinois? Uh, check this out. That's kind of impressive. That's dedication right there. That, hey. that really is. So there it is. Uh -huh. Look at that Texas flag. It's pretty yeah. nice. So I really, uh, I Texas is my second state after spending so much time and leaving so many uh, sweat and so much sweat and so many tears in uh, in that state. I mean, I truly, truly love it. Uh, Don't the, forget the cow that you met. Yeah. But, you know, you exactly. can't make up the type of, uh, what's the word? Uh, they were just so friendly. Uh, and I can still smell the dust. This was flying in Texas, and it was a gift brought into me. That Not just the, um, you know, the, the friendliness, but just the, the hospitality. Uh, people were, you know, you know, invite me into their house. Obviously, I couldn't stop. I was on the trail, right? But they invite me into their house, invite me to eat. Uh, you know, they they said they had extra beds, and this is just like random people, just like, hey, what are you doing this for? And you know, like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, and then welcome us, you know, bring us in. So uh, it was a great time in Texas. I really, really, truly, truly love it. Uh, I feel that I'm way more of a Texan than Ernie, by the way. Um, which I'm wanting <laughs> a message on, message right now. We got to bring him on real quick. Uh, uh, yeah, if he uh, if you want me to, I, I definitely will uh, will do that. So tell him right. yeah, let's uh, kind of circle back around. So obviously, you did the walk last year. It was uh, from border of uh, San Diego, Tijuana and all the way over to Texas. So basically from Pacific coast all the way into Texas, ending in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. A few weeks ago, everyone calls me and goes, got a great idea. We're going to go Los Angeles to DC. And I'm like, damn it. All right, we're doing this. But one of the things is we had a meeting today. We have, uh, we're starting to put the team together, right? Got to get a team. And 
no team is complete, by the way, without at least one or two Canadians. We have a Canadian on the team. Absolutely love it. Um, but a lot of lessons learned from your walk. <laughs> uh, I think that's safe to say. Yeah, I was, uh, I, you know, I just today, right? We are uh, supposed to have a 15 minute conversation, but discussing what, uh, uh, you know, the do's and don'ts and the things we need to do differently. Uh, uh, it, it just got crazy, right? Like to think of all the, all the crazy stuff that we had to uh, overcome and just, you know what, you know about this mindset, right? The Marine Corps mindset, uh, adapt and overcome, right? I mean, I applied yeah. that. I applied that every step of the way because every step of the way was like a challenge, you know, missing one. You know, one person quitting uh, at the last minute, uh, you know, my buddy stepping in and then losing me up in the mountains and, you know, uh, to, you know, the border guardians that were trying to pin me down and, and were shaking me down for my green card. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, oh, that's was, right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, that was a funny one. And, and I don't, you know, I'm an American, so I don't need to be apologetic about who my you know what I what I look like and where I'm at and so I don't I don't apologize and I don't show anybody anything because I'm an American yeah. and uh it was, I think the confidence that I walk with though uh really like it, it threw them off a little bit because they were like okay so this guy's not running from me this guy's walking right at me uh this guy is not pulling out his wallet this guy is not asking for help and he so they're like, oh, are you the new property owner? Nope. Uh, uh, what do you, I'm out for a nature, nature walk, man. What's up? Nature walk, huh? And I said, where's the next town? Because I'm lost. <laughs> it's like they did give me. Uh, they did point me in the right direction, but they didn't offer to drive me out there. I was half dead. But, but you know, I think that's hell? important. I think that's important that at all times that we, um, that you know. In, in order to be what it is that we say we are, we have to act like it, right? And so I'm an American and I, you know, I, I live it through and through and I act like it and, and that's that's that. And I don't apologize for anything else. So. <laughs> but it no. was funny to see that though, because obviously a lot of the undocumented, uh, the, you know, the illegals coming through, um, they look just like me and, you know, and so I can understand that, but at the same time, you know, <laughs> Give a shit. I'm gonna... I was, uh, oh, no, I know. It was, uh, it's interesting though, because to touch on the training of this, you were actually at this point in time, right? You're, you're doing a little working out. We're getting prepared. You, there was like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, there was like zero training, I think, for three days. Oh, there's three days. Uh, about eight miles, I think, of um, the third time we did it on flat land here on farmland. Three. And uh, I got some bad blisters, so I was like, hey, we'll just put it off. We'll just do it as we go. So, <laughs> the first day oh I... Oh, my God. If that if that younger Marine could see you now. You got blisters in your... Like, what the hell? Like, oh, yeah. my feet hurt. Got to stop for the day. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was just too funny. I uh, You get banned in Texarkana for <laughs> exercises. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. Uh, no, no exercising your civil liberties in uh, oh boy. Texarkana. Yeah, you know, I, I might get in trouble in some places, but who cares? I mean, we yeah, survived. I mean, survive that's life. Like, you're supposed to like kind of like ruffle a little feathers, you know. Here, and I there. mean, look, man. If if safety is a concern when you're stirring shit up, then you know, then don't stir shit up. You know, if you're concerned, you get you get a little dirty. Um, you know, we're going to do what we need to do. And obviously this is for our veterans and, you know, and, uh, and I just hope that we're able to unite enough people behind us, um, so that everyone can, can, uh, I'll swap your blisters for my, <laughs> I can't use tendonitis. Are we, are we trained, are we, uh, trading ailments here? Yeah, no, man. I, I got enough of my own. I don't need to. Julie's, not a, uh. It's not a competition, Julie. It's yeah. not a competition. Now, Julie will make it a competition. Julie, no, 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 no. Not good enough. Whoa, oh, what's going on here? Oh, whoa, mindset. Whoa, baby. now. Ernie Schultz. All right. So, how many, uh, the training that you're doing now, uh, we discussed it. This, so, kind of circle back around. You were doing about like 50 miles a day 
give or take on uh, average. No, those, those were the high days, uh, 50, some over 50. Uh, but I think about 35 to 40 was probably the average. Um, yeah. Okay. So, you know, so we got to the point where our my stride went from a 24-inch stride, uh, you know, in between steps to 32-inch stride, about 1,600 steps per hour, roughly 1,300 or 1,600, depending. Uh, you know, in the mornings, we would do what was like two minutes of running, three minutes of walking until, you know, I could feel the fatigue set in. Then it was just walking from there on out. And we would walk 10, 12 hours, even 14 hours at times. And... Um, it was a Walmart parking lot, and I was aid of a disabled person and no phone. I was keeping an eye out. Yep, that happens. <laughs> I don't know. I'm lost. Uh, you, know the, you can't exercise your civil liberties. Oh, I got it. Got it. Walmart parking lot. Walmart parking lots tend to be very strange these days. I, I don't go much to Walmart. I do the quick... Uh, uh, pick up on the side, they got that, and, and that's it. It's that's true, that crazy. is a thing. I mean, yeah, if you want to get into a fight or something like that, go to a Walmart. It's nuts. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, she's taking shots here. Look at this one. Oh, 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 oh yeah, you. you're short, so it takes more steps. Oh, we're going to make her walk with us. Talking all that shit. Oh, my God, that is hilarious right there. I love that. That is the comment of the day. Oh, Julie, that, that, how tall are you, Julie? I believe Julie's like, Julie's tall. I think she said she's like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I believe she's like 5'9". So, she's, uh, my height. Oh, so, uh, Julie yeah. got the jokes. I'm working yeah, to make Julie's... the walk with us. We gotta, Where do you live, Julie? Australia. <laughs> hey. <laughs> She's fine. Right, how are you gonna do that one now? Uh, pretty hard. soon you're gonna be taking like I mean this thing is gonna who knows what we're gonna do next year. Next year, what, I mean you're gonna call me and be like, all right, check us out. We're getting a boat. We're going to Australia. We're going to Australia. <laughs> getting a hot air balloon, floating to Australia, and then doing a hot uh, air balloon hot. floating to Australia. Yeah, we'll head out on a head air, hot air balloon. Uh, I think we can do that. You'll be ready to go by then. Okay. We'll do a little training prior to that. Doesn't get better than that, man. I'm barely mm. tall enough to meet my Air Force height requirement. I didn't know they had requirements in the Air Force. It was just like good credit and you're in, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Holy crap, that's awesome. Um, so this time around, I brought tears to my eyes. That's funny. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, I remember the recruiter saying, you got good credit. I'm like, I'm 17. I don't have credit. I don't even have, what, what's credit? Is that thing that, uh, yeah. Um, so last time, raise awareness to deported veterans. This time, you're like, no, we got multiple issues. We're not just doing one thing. We're, we're going to ruffle some feathers going all the way across. Um, when we had our meeting this morning. <laughs> In Virginia. Uh, oh, Oh, okay. No, well, I would have made it right. in with flying colors. Outstanding. Um, so, kind of preparation for everything. We were looking at a route, and then we discovered, okay, you're going to... Now, yes, you're pretty much walking the whole distance. Like, yeah. There's no one that's going to be able to like sit there and kind of question that one. And if they do, they can shove it. But there are going to be parts of this trip where you are inevitably going to have to like well that's a little too dangerous i'd rather still be alive and not get run over yeah, like, by a like, train like last time the the goal isn't to show the world what a badass i am the goal is to bring awareness to the issues that a veteran is facing right um there are people who can do this there are much bigger tougher uh, men and women julie i get it you're tough like big and tall uh, and she's in australia where and- everything tries to kill you Yes, and she's in Australia. So I get it, Julie. I get it. Uh, <laughs> so for that reason, Australian? we gotta have another Australian, maybe a uh, Canadian. Yeah, we yeah we absolutely do. Uh, so we don't, you know, need, it's not about showing how tough I am. But there are some areas, especially areas on the freeway, where they don't have a service road, where there aren't yeah. trails, where we can go around certain sections. 
Um, and, and for that reason, uh, you know, I don't want to risk my life either. Um, so we'll skip it. We'll skip a mile or two, depending. I'm, we're going to get Oscar on board. Oscar will be in charge of that. He'll make those calls. Uh, he knows how uh, stubborn I am and how you know adamant I am about walking as much as possible. Uh, he also let me run into a lot of trouble last time just to laugh at me, uh, including almost getting, you know. You almost did get impaled by a train. And yes. It wasn't like a, it was, it wasn't like a little tiny, like, no, it was a freight train. <laughs> it was a train. And then Oscar's like, hey, there, did you see that train? Yeah, it almost hit me. Yeah, when I left the Marine Corps, I was sprinting. I was doing about a four, five, four, six. I was really, really fast. I had speed. But I don't think I've ever, I've ran that fast since I left the Marine Corps, man. I sprinted through that through that bridge. I mean, I got there so fast. My hat flew off. All the little junk I had on flew off. I, but anyway, so Oscar will be in charge of, there will be specific sections. We do expect to have a full team this time, including a road scout. Uh, send somebody out ahead to probably scout the next day or two of my walking route or... Um, we're going to have most of it mapped out, obviously. But when you get there, when you have it mapped out, even on on Google Maps, right, uh, you get there and, and just, it's all entirely different when you're there in person. Uh, so, you know, they'll determine whether I have to skip a mile or two and as little as possible. Uh, so that's realistic. Uh, we did have to skip a section in Arizona that was, like, pretty bad. That was about 75, 95 miles, I believe, that we skipped. Um that was like real uh, treacherous. It was just now. Let's just put it this way: we ran into the scouts for the cartels out there. They didn't mess with me. I spoke to them in Spanish. So I mean, just walking through, um, veteran, and this is what I'm doing. And they left me alone, but I knew what was going on. And so yeah, that was several areas in Arizona and southern near the border, uh, up especially on the in the mountain ranges. So. We had to be careful in some of those areas we just had to skip because it was just and we'll do it again. Like I said, it's not about showing that I can do every single inch of that walk. It's about, you know, raising awareness as we go along and, and sacrifice as much as we do, because I'll tell you what, man, that that I, you know, laying down for two months after coming home, like uh, it, it was bad, man. And you saw how much weight I put on so quickly and uh you know, and, 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 you know, we're going to go through it again and it's, but it's, it's not, I think that next this time we'll be able to handle it much better. I'll be ready. I'll be able to walk the longer distances at the beginning without tearing up my body as fast as I did. I'll be ready for that. Um, you know, we're going to go at first, I went on just socks or whatever. This time we'll be doing full on wraps on my feet from the get go to make sure that I don't develop any blisters and infections. So so one of the things actually that uh, that we were looking at and discussing this morning um, was you, there's this whole safety element to this. So as we start to slowly plan out the route, there's the safety element that I just mentioned where like, okay, you ran into the scouts for the cartel, right? But it was just literally you and Oscar. Yeah. You know, right? So this time you're like, okay, we need to have uh you know obviously we have the the safety vehicle and we have the safety vehicle driver then we have ramon okay cool well we want to record this so we got to have a camera guy and maybe an assistant for that um we need to have somebody there that's either medically trained in Preferably some young. way shape or form or have some sort of medical per you know so you're looking at easily five or six people on this with you this time um there's uh, all sorts of things that that we were looking at as far as um you know what's the medical equipment that you're going to take this time around mm -hmm. like because that's a big thing uh, i think obviously your feet uh, you did this i didn't i stayed from the comfort of the ac yeah <laughs> yeah well we're gonna i don't think it's gonna be that like that complicated we're not gonna go obviously we just have to make sure that i'm in good health that i'm in better shape this time the last time because i was pretty chubby and this time we're looking at, we're trimming down not only that my workouts uh even the weightlifting is 
more of a lean of uh, uh, obviously we want to trim down on the top uh, on the torso area and get the legs stronger and you know drop as much weight as possible because if you, you just add it, I mean, every extra, like the 20 pounds, every step is that's how much more pressure is on your lower body. So yep. this time we're getting ready like a professional athlete would, um, you know, like I said, weight, uh, the weightlifting, the actual diet and uh, the conditioning, you know, I'm going to be in great shape when the time comes and uh, and we'll be ready to rock and roll, man. I mean, we just that is going to add make it that much that much uh easier for us to you know complete the mission and i want to complete it on time i want to be back uh i want to be back home by mid-august you know by my birthday i celebrated my birthday away from my family last year you know and i i want to be home with them this time so i don't know if that's enough time to be honest with you but we want to do it so and, uh, we'll... are you talking about time yeah so it's like, uh, July... like to 88 days or something of that nature right that's roughly about the 80 days, mid-August. 80 so, days. That's, starting uh, end of May. Mm-hmm. And then, all, of, all of June, July, and half of August. So, so things that we were looking at along this route are there's the route that you're going to walk, but then inevitably, you know, you're going to come to an area where it's like, okay, well, I'm in this cool city, but also up here, right? And like, oh, there's Chicago. Mm -hmm. but that's not on the way of where I'm going. Uh, yeah. You know, so we got to drive up there. Um, how many like rallies, press conferences, and stuff like that do you think uh, we'll be able to schedule in this? Uh, I would like to schedule a minimum of 10. Okay. Uh, 10 major rallies and, you know, a good 25, you know, smaller uh, you know, presentations at local VFWs or American Legions or even at city halls where we're able to meet with elected officials. And obviously we want to we want to carry the message uh, as as far and as you know, to as many people as possible. Um, I think that sometimes we get lost in everything else that's happening in the world. You know, we just saw the news on Russia and I just saw my cousin posting. Uh, they already have. Remember all the brainwashing, like, oh, we're ready to go to Baghdad, you know, and uh, it was always like in our cadences, how we're going to take out China or or yep. Iraq or whatever. They're already getting ready to, you know, for, you know, for Russia. And um, I think we're so quick and ready to tear up. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, ready to tear up, uh, you know, and go to war. And as Americans, we're war happy, right? Uh, we're like ready for it. When we come back, yeah, we really we are. Have to, we have to address that as well. Uh, our young men and women are ready to, you know, step up and do do what needs to be done. Uh, but we also need to take care of them when they come home, because they're no longer whole. And we're no longer intact. We're no longer able to do what everyone else does and just go on about our business like the rest of the world. So, we need to invest as much as we can uh, and take care of our veterans. So. Uh, that that's the goal, right? And we want to remind people. We want to re remind people how many veterans are homeless right now. We want to remind them how many veterans commit suicide every single day. We want to remind them, you know, how many are in prison, how many are addicted to drugs, how many are deported, and how many are struggling just to just to move, get along every single day. So, anyways, just that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal, yes. and we shouldn't. I mean, we. I had I, this fucking guy said the other day, you know that. Half of us fake are half of us fake what's wrong with us. Like what we say is wrong with us for, you know, disability compensation. And I'm like, really, really, you, fuck, you damn turncoat. Like, like, really? Come on, come on man. Like, like, what? Other figures, sure. There are people who fake to get welfare. There are people who lie on their taxes, millionaires who lie on their taxes. You know, there are. Everywhere in this world, there are cheaters, and that, it is what it is. But for that, we're yeah. going to punish and make our veterans go get a damn attorney that specializes in be veterans' benefits. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, that that's ridiculous, right there. I, and you and I both know that. I mean, it's, right. I, I'm right, just impressed right here, by the way, real fast. Uh, so, uh, 
screen name is, username that is uh, MD uh, concept, I believe it is. So she yeah, was, yeah. was saying that, uh, if I remember correctly, looking at the comments earlier, uh, Air Force, yeah. uh, Reserve, Army Reserve, and now National Guard. Desert Shield Veteran? Holy crap. That's, That's uh, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, 91. Yeah, I just added you on Facebook, by the way, uh, uh, MD concept. Uh, I hope uh, I'm saying it right. I hope so, too. Because sometimes there are names where I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, there's Ernie. There's Ernesto Marisol. Oh, boy. Let me send that to – I'm going to send the link to Ernie real fast. So Ernie's going to get a message from uh, Ernest Mariscal. Yep. And I am wearing his t-shirt, uh, Keep Up the oh, Fight. Oh, you are not currently in. Okay, sorry. Didn't mean to Keep up the fight apparel. Uh, let's get him in here. Yeah, no, MD got out of 99. That, that doesn't show. That's the 90s, baby. That's old school. That's like, if that's the a trailblazer. Ernie... That's... No, that's actually really, really cool. You don't see, you know, I say this. They waged the damn perfect war. Mm -hmm. They really did. You know, that was... I mean, that was I, they they set the I mean, precedent. Sort of our, uh, you know, you know, Bush Senior. They 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 knew what they were doing. Vets yeah, to they industry. Set, they say, hey, what's up, Matt? And it's uh, for all of us. And it's Matt's awesome. He is from uh, the UK. Uh, the UK, right? He, he yeah, asked he his last week about about coming over and what PTSD if that would affect his uh, that immigration. That is correct. Uh, right. so let me see here. We should bring an attorney, an immigration attorney, one of these days to help with some of those questions or some of our veterans that are like uh, green card soldiers or stuff like that. And then maybe they can uh, help yeah. with some of the questions. Not one of these mm -hmm. days. Uh, Ernie, did you get the link? I can forward the uh, link. To radio me. still learning how to like juggle. Uh, yeah. Let me let me uh, do this. Me, oh, oh, got... the... oh, actually, you have the link. Yeah, there you go. Ramon, yes, do something. Forward... I'm going to forward like it to you, Ernie. I am pretty good at a lot of stuff. You are. I mean, you are. Uh, you, got, you got like you do home inspections and electrical, where you're not electrocuting yourself. Let's just talk about how. That's right, let's just say right that there. I haven't died from electrocuting myself. That is uh, that is a plus. <laughs> Meanwhile, me with low voltage, I'm just like, oh, go, okay, please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. It's like I've been shot plenty of times, and it still terrifies me. We were in Guanajuato a few months ago. Ask Ernie how I react to electricity. Like he'll tell you the story about. Um, he, he's got a funny one. So Ernie, uh, we just, I just, I just messaged you the link on Messenger. I'll Go ahead and jump on, brother. Uh, jump on and uh, do what you do, man. Yes, he's we'll, a special uh, one. Oh, he's special. Well, let me talk about Ernie, man. Er, so Ernie, Ernie, and I have been friends for a very long time, and we met. Um, by being advocates for veterans and doing different things, right? We, it was just inevitable. We ran into each other. We live in the same town. We became good friends. And he was a motivational speaker. He is a motivational speaker. But as he was developing that skill, he was posting these videos. And I said, uh, and I said, man, you're starting to sound like, uh, what's his name? Robert Godfrey. You remember him? Robert. The Godfrey guy, just always. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's not Robert, but Godfrey's the last name. And uh, 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 I told uh, Ernie, "You're starting to sound like this Godfrey guy." <laughs> he was so mad at me. He was like, "You're a dick. Why can't you be nice about it?" I said, "Man, that's what friends are for, brother." But you know what? He cleaned that up. He straightened up a little bit, and he's done. If you see him speak in person, he's fantastic. He's a great. Uh, uh, um, motivational speaker uh i wouldn't say public speaker because i know i got him on that one like you know what i mean like you know public events and stuff like that where you got to give speeches but he's all right he's all right he's all right he's all right well, he's, um... the, we'll we'll bring on the the man that is i right. uh there he is ernie oh oh, oh. what's going on guys motivational speaker extraordinaire uh extraordinaire uh, man sexy. that has made fun of a, a boot that might make a comeback. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, that, yeah, we need more of that. We need more of the boot. I I, I don't know. Uh, the boot might show up here in about a month or two. Uh, 
been having some phone calls with him. He was thinking of doing the walk. Uh-huh. Uh, he's just – I don't know if he's not motivated enough or something. I just – Got to figure it out. We'll figure it out. Ernie, what's going on, buddy? Not much, man. Just uh, living day to day, enjoying every day, maximize every day, and just, you know, loving life because that's all we can do, man. You know? Yeah. You, you have your ups and downs, but you just got to take them and learn from them and fucking keep moving forward. Hey, there you go. Look true. at that mindset. That badass mindset t shirt. <laughs> you know what? That's all uh, it was. You asked me, what did you, how did you do it? Mindset. It was a t-shirt that I paid for, by the way, because I don't get free t-shirts. Even nope. though I'm on the show and we're talking to folks from Australia, from Britain, from Texas. Uh, <laughs> and I should have paid for this. Texas, by the way, is my second home state. If I ever retire, that is where I'm going. Uh, Texas, I like, baby. I like McAllen. Get, they walk before, me in. Let's just say this. Uh Texas, when Californians come there, can you just please make sure that we don't California, Texas? That's all I'm asking. Just don't. Please don't California, Texas. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. I have a friend who retired in his 70s. He sold his mansion out in Carlsbad. The home he bought for, I don't know, $80,000, dollars 40 50 years oh, ago. Jesus. And he sold it for about $1.5 million. So he made his fortune in California and said, I am out of here. I hate you communists. And he left to South Carolina. He is driving the government officials crazy in uh, Myrtle Beach because, you know, they, didn't, uh, they don't have enough uh, people regulating, like, construction. So his house wasn't built up to par. You know, all the things that you find in California, they don't have in South Carolina. And so that really, 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 really pisses him off. And I'm like, you you left California because all the regulations and all you're complaining because they don't have that many in South Carolina. So anyways, it's just too funny to see that. Right? He is, uh, he hated California uh, and now he's frustrated. Hey, now. Ernie, are you on a uh, Bluetooth? Um, yes, I am. Oh, okay. I was wondering, I was like, I'm hearing something feedback here. Something is very... Want me to get off that? Yeah, oh, man. Just, well, yeah, just yeah. so we don't... We, 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 Ramon and me, we talk a lot. We don't need to hear more of us. As much as hey, I Aaron, would love off. for that to happen. Yeah. Oh, he wants to... Oh, look at that. Do you recognize that light? That, that light looks a yeah, um, I let him borrow it, I don't know how many years ago, and he still has it. So one day when he's uh, the president of the United States of America. I'm going to uh, make uh, Ernie the ambassador to uh, the Philippines. Oh, yeah, cool. we do yeah. that. There's going to be a lot of Ernie's running around, so I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get him snipped before he goes out, though. We don't want any loss. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely have to do that. Well, I mean, you know, uh, which G – carries wait, hold on this is which g carries bluetooth feedback i have no idea that's getting too technical that's for you radio i don't know i know that's why i had like brought that up i'm like wait a minute that's an interesting question i've got to think about this huh. ernie what have you been doing what are you gonna do for the walk are you gonna walk at all with ramon i probably will walk some um, I do have a full-time job, and I manage a, a freaking about 200-vehicle fleet of trash trucks. And trash, as you know, never stops. So I'm a very busy person. And also, trash talking doesn't stop either. We get <laughs> I'm a little trashy. And, you know, I do um, – of course, I do my speaking – I also run my uh, business um, selling inspirational T-shirts on KeepUpTheFight.com. So I'm always doing shameless something. Plug. You know, we found shameless our first plug. Like shameless plug. Got to have shameless hey, plugs. Hey, Radio, we found <laughs> our first sponsor there. We, You know what? Look at that. Oh, people there it is. in the chat, you know, we – Ramon does this thing. We're going to have to – I mean, we're going to need some help on uh finding things because there's only so I mean, much that a I mean, couple of just, us can do you just plugged in the apparel i mean if you sell any shirts no yeah, ernie was you know, he designed our, our last uh, set of t-shirts um i actually need to reach out so we need a design already for the new one 
uh, launching off. And I kind of want to do something in tribute to Long Beach and the Susan Chavez Park where we're launching it off. So uh, oh, we're going to come up with an idea. What's that? I have an idea. What's the idea? We need to have a competition for a logo. Ooh. That'd be good. That would be right? nice. like, obviously, we discussed having multiple different things for when it comes to that for the walk. But yeah, we need to have a uh, radio's thinking today. Maybe it's the beer. Yeah, program. maybe uh, we can do some of that. Um, yeah, we have some. Uh, we have he books the great artists. Uh, like, you know, we do. I would like to do a few shirts, and uh, especially to the we show up to these rallies uh, to pay tribute to the state or the city or whoever the heck, whatever you know. I mean. I think we'll have that coordinated by then. So that's going to be your job, Ernie. Coming up with a logo or a, a graphic? With the graphics. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, you know, I'm already thinking something, you know, coast to coast. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be uh, it's be very interesting. So uh, this morning you brought up something very interesting about Philadelphia and Tun Tavern. Yes. Uh, Thank you for mentioning this. I did not come up with this idea, though. It was uh, our resident Canadian that is on board, the, uh, on board, excuse me, the Karen, uh, who was like, hey, uh, you need to go through Philadelphia because of Tun Tavern. And I'm like, how the hell did we not think of this? A Canadian thought of it, though. A Canadian thought of it. So thank you, Canada. That's pretty awesome, man. You guys do that. That would be awesome. Uh, we are. Yeah. We are. We just got to implement it into everything we're doing. Obviously, we don't want to add that much wear and tear, uh, you know, because, you know, they don't make this kind of stuff, you know, twice. It's God created one and only, and we don't want to destroy me forever, you know, so we... Now let, now, let me ask this. Is that tavern still operational? No, Tun no, Tavern is a freeway overpass. In fact, this, there's a sign in Philadelphia that basically it's like it says Tun Tavern and like in around or somewhere in this vicinity was a bar where the Marine oh, Corps was created. So wow. there's no museum there? Jesus Christ. Yeah, they, no, it's it's not there. Uh, Put that down, huh? That's been gone for... Who knows how long? Maybe it, no, because I, I was already thinking of going there and obviously uh, drinking a few beers and recreating that night. Uh, well, you got to be a marine for that. You got to be a marine. Got to be a marine. Well, I could be, uh, you know, just a, a standby, or you know, we'll let you in. How about well, that? Well, there it is. Yeah, Ernie, I was in the bar when it was created. I watched him. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll be the uh, the quality control guy or something. There I don't you know. go. Be the Wasn't it like uh, I remember at airborne school this like, or whenever I was with the army or any branch. Sir, you know I was gonna be a marine. Then there's gonna be Ernie. Is like I remember when it was created. They wanted me to join. And then I fell but over drunk. I was gonna be a marine, but I like my favorite is one is I was gonna go to the service, but oh that <laughs> one's horrible. But you know no, I punch. Really. I'd punch juice on in face if he told me so. Oh, something. God. Yeah. I'd kick somebody's ass. <laughs> oh, said, shit. Well, my daddy was in the Marine Corps, and my son was in the Marine Corps. Oh, that doesn't make you a Marine, bro. <laughs> that makes you no, the... No, sorry. You got to earn the, the title. That makes you the biatch in the middle. That's all that makes you, man. Oof. Anyway. He's got jokes, and I got the air drums. Threat me with a good time. Right? I just laughed the one. Or, like, not the Marines, but my dad was in the service. My son is in the service. Or some. I'm just like. You shouldn't even say that out loud. You should just keep it to yourself. Because that yep. makes it seem like no. your dad had balls, your son had balls. <laughs> and you had none. They skipped your ass, Oh, uh, my God. That's great. I love that. So we've got. We've got to work. Okay, so actually, we had another interesting one here. Oh, not interesting, but valid question. Uh, which mediums for the logo? So um, I am a punk rock guy, uh, and I am uh, well. I'm thinking stickers because I mean, oh, definitely. I, we, we cannot confirm nor deny. I mean, Ramon would never 
vandalize any. Oh, deface. Yes, thank you. Deface. Deface, stop sign, sign, whatever. No, 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 no. However, there. there might be an idiot or two. Because there's always an idiot in every group. Possibilities, yes. We also have a fan club. Right. We, have a, we have people following us. Yeah. We also wow. have yes. this. It's um, kind of cool, actually. And good news, this time we are actually starting this months in advance from last yeah. time. Because yes. last time I think it was like two weeks <laughs> when I met Ramon. And then all of a sudden I'm like, so when are we doing this? Like next year? No. I was like, no, two weeks. Well, I'm leaving. <laughs> so, well, check this out. You know, um, Ramon says, hey, you know, I'm going to walk from, you know, San Diego to, oh, what was it, McAllen, correct? And so he tells okay. me this. I'm like, shit, man. All right, you know, let's do this. You know, I'll support you, man, 100%. So he, it was what, a Monday when we, you you kicked it off. Uh, Monday, yeah. Okay, so me, I'm driving to San Diego to go, you know, see this happen. So we're right on the border. So what does this freaking 21 year Army veteran do when he sees a sign that says, "Do not go past this sign"? U.S. property, U.S. government property. Yes. What do you think I did? Well, you got to go past the sign. There's I no said, other way. Hey, I said, fuck it. I'm doing it. Yeah, so of I course. Go, so I'm driving on the border now, like, in between the fences. And this Border Patrol guy, like, rushes towards me. He's like, what are you doing? Oh, I got a guy that's walking from uh, San Diego to McAllen, and I'm trying to find the starting point. He goes, wait right here. So he does a U-turn, and then he gets behind me and turns his lights on. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, man? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for uh, a direction to find my my friend, and he starts asking he gets me. Gets lost questions. quite a bit, actually. What happened? He gets lost quite a bit. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I do. So, yeah, he starts asking me all these questions. I was like, look, man, I'm not here doing anything illegal. You can check my car. I don't care. I just need to find my friend so we can I could be there, and. So they start searching my car. They do all this shit. And they were like, what in the hell were you thinking by crossing that damn, you know, that line where it says do not cross? I said, just like this. I go, well, I saw it. And then I said, I don't give a fuck. And I kept going. <laughs> they were like, son of a bitch. I was like, great. Uh, good job, Ernie. Great example for my son who was in the back seat. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, yeah. Oh, you didn't mention that part. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that part. Yeah. That was oh, God. Great example. Awesome. Good example. Yeah. There's got to be a good example. Look everywhere. on his face like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Ernie. Oh, my God. Tell him about me and electricity. Tell him about those TJ boys that challenged us when we were in Mexico and uh, they challenged us to that. Uh, what are the calls? Or shocks? Or... Yeah, it was like a. Some type of shock treatment, or you know those two yeah, that you hold with, electric, with electricity on it, and they 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 increase the voltage. Yeah, so uh, we're uh, in Guanajuato, Mexico, and we're highly uh, we're enjoying the evening. Enjoying the evening, yes, that's a good. Yes, there you go. We were at a a high rate of festivities. Ah, that's a good one. And so. This guy comes around, he has this, you know, two, you know, rods that you hold on to, and then he just, you know, turns up the voltage, and you get your ass shocked, right? So I grab it, and um, he turns it up, and I'm like, fuck this, man. I'm fucking going to continue my festivities. And then Ramon gets up, and he grabs him. No, no. And he's I, like, I said no. Remember, I said no, because I didn't know when to let go. And then that guy from... TJ was like, competition, let's all do like a, you know, circle jerk. Like everybody hold on to it. <laughs> you remember that? And yeah, that yeah, yeah. And yeah, so we start doing this thing. And Ramon's like continuous or continuing to hold on to these damn leads. And I'm just, I get, finally I get up and I'm kind of like swaying left and right. And I'm like, dude, you're like every meme of the fucking Marine, dude. <laughs> So I was literally right. holding them, and everybody's dying around me, and I'm just like, just staring at the guy that challenged me. I was like, "You challenged the wrong," it. 
MF or like wrong, <laughs> wrong Marine to check. And it's yeah, funny because I passed on it and I told Ernie, I passed on it because I don't know when like, oh, eventually your body starts to, um, you know, you can't control it. And so you can't let it go even if you want to. So oh, what you wow. have to do is uh, it's not going to give you a heart attack. It's a mild, mild heart attack. But, uh, mild heart have, attack. Yeah, you just have to hold mild. on and, uh, you know, keep a straight face. Anyways, I kicked everybody's ass in that bar that challenged me. Um, everybody that came in. So these guys were like, Jesus. I mean, it got us like a few rounds of free shots, right? Yeah, that... Uh... Of the good stuff? Because I don't remember how I got home that night. <laughs> or to our hotel. <laughs> how did we get back here? Uh, I don't know. All right. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it was about 9.30 when we left. <laughs> We're old. Yeah. We're old. What the man. hell? <laughs> oh, yeah, we, uh... we kind of went hard in the tape, man. We went hard until 9.30 p.m. and then went back to our room and slept until noon the next day. <laughs> And then started drinking again. Oh, okay, so you went uh, true military fashion. I won't say Marine Corps because there are plenty of uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force. I don't know about Space Force. Does Space Force drink? Are they allowed to drink? You know, that's a good question. That, that's something we need to ask and find out because I don't know. know anyone in the Space Force comment section here? Anyone? Space Force? <laughs> I'm just afraid uh, to ask. Uh, uh, so since uh, Ramon likes electricity when Julie's here she likes zapping people apparently so uh, there it is uh, well Julie hopefully on Julie has hopefully... it out for me oh okay I was thinking you know one of those you know see somebody in a parking lot that has to zap them kind of thing but no it's completely uh I'll let uh, her uh, tell you what her profession is it's pretty uh -oh. cool is it okay you're in for a world of hurt <laughs> yeah it's, you know zapping or people could be, a, could be a fetish thing too you know who knows uh, yeah uh, ever put I mean, on a 12-hour clock or 12-hour clock ever get or i'm lockdown. still learning how to read marines or yeah. lockdown uh, without knowing. thank you politician help me out <laughs> uh yeah without knowing who had the control so basically, they couldn't get out. <laughs> wow. Sant says, drinking you under the talk. Oh, boy. That's right. You just stay drinking. Sant stays drinking you under the talk. James, you're going <coughs> to repeat, brother, because I'm a little uh, confused. Well, the right talk now. is, well, how do they spell it? Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, he's talking, we're talking about like tactical operations center? That's what I was thinking. Like, cause that's the army. That's what you guys call it in the army. Yes, army. Yeah, uh, in the in the Marine Corps, we call it the. Uh, well, yeah, it starts with the C. We speak jarhead. Um, C O C, or yeah, you guys can read between the lines on that one. Uh, minus the K. Yeah, so I'm a little James is drunk. I that makes drunk. Sense. James, that's what Look it at that. Like. It looked like drunk James. Texting. That's what it's good. Ah, yeah. there we go. That explains a lot. No picks, please. No picks. You know what comes next after the drunk sex. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, what are you talking about? The Royal Hypnol or what? Uh, oh, no, man. That one? Oh, that's all bad. <laughs> Love it. That's all bad. <laughs> James, James, where are you messaging from? Yeah. Are you in the Space Force? We are trying I to find he's, somebody in the Space I Force. I think he said he's intoxicated, right? Yeah, he said he's drunk. That's why I'm asking him where he's at. Uh, wait. Make sure you got a DD, uh, buddy. Stick figures. A long few pairs. You don't want to see that. Stick figures. <laughs> I don't know what this means. Uh, wait. Are we? I think. Wait. Is this an electrical reference? Few pairs. I think he's talking about his socks. I am told. Wow, that got weird fast. That did. Oh, Fort Benning, Georgia. All right, Woo! baby. Let's Fort hold on, Benning. Hold of airborne. Hold of uh, airborne. No, Columbus, Ohio. No, Fort Benning, Georgia. He's in Fort uh, Benning, Georgia now. How many Columbus, Ohio, Fort Benning, Georgia? Oh, wait. How many? I think. 
Columbus, Ohio, Fort Benning, Georgia is his home now. Uh, he's just, uh, you know, I think he's, he's doing between... talk to text and Siri's not understanding what the hell he's saying. He's just yeah, yeah. I was, uh, and, uh, he's, he's drunk. Yeah. I was stationed at Fort Benning for about a year and so back in 2005. I have a picture of tomato, me tomato. At Fort Benning. Tomato uh, potato. The airborne. Tower. Oh, airborne. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there was yeah. a hole the thing, and then they release you, and then you float like a little lawn dart down. Yeah, down. I used to run. I used to run. Oh, believe it or not, I used to run a lot in that area. But hey, and, uh, what's up? So we're gonna start the walk on a weekend this time. So you have the weekends off, right? Well, I have, I have any day off because I am the uh, boss. By the way, there any? Tell them about the time that I almost killed you. Uh, which time are we talking about? The time we were doing the 9-11 stair run. Oh, man. How many smart ideas have you guys had prior to deciding to walk uh, there's the many. U.S.-Mexico border? <laughs> then there's quite a we're going coast to coast. Next thing you know, we're going to go San Diego to Portland, Maine or something. Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's All do right, it. Man. No, Next um, year. Walk the line three. We're already planning it. Or we're going to go yeah, reverse order this you got to hear this story. Man. Ernie almost died on Yeah, me. so as you can tell, I'm not in the best shape of my life. And Round is a shape. Yeah, so very true. I must agree. And like so it. we had the 9-11 uh, stair climb. So it's me and I'm on and uh, our friend of ours, another friend of ours, uh, Raymond, another veteran. So we start this stair climb. And so we're going up, down, up, down, up, down. On this uh, kind of like stadium kind of seating. And so as we're running, yelling, you know, doing all these things, all of a sudden, as I'm going up towards the top of the stairs, my uh, vision starts turning blurry. Everything starts turning dark a little bit. And I got Ramon over here. I'm a fucking Marine. Keep fucking running. And I swore to God, I mean, I went into like, you know, like a camera is like, you know, shooting the film and then it like falls over. And that's when I started it eventually. Man. <laughs> oh, and, God. This, and I got this guy running around saying, He's a Marine. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's keep running. So and then we only had to run like, how many laps was it? Like five or I don't remember. 11. 11. 11. And then by the time we get to, you know, he was like, Okay, I think we did 13 or 14. I was like, You motherfucker. So you we, know, were, like, six, we were like at 16 laps. Way over the required amount, and I didn't say anything because they were making fun of me, saying the Marines eat crayons and we don't know how to count. So I stopped counting. I didn't count, and so I actually did count, but I just kept running. And, and then all of a sudden, Ernie grabs a flag. He starts waving, and he's all, "Hold the flag for me!" <laughs> I think I'm gonna die. And then we get yeah, up so the and there's a camera down there. There's a reporter, Mr. Marscal. Would you be interested in it? Talk to us about your experience today. And there's Ernie. <laughs> yeah, you know, like the, the fat kid that can't breathe. That was me. I was like, <laughs> oh, I feel like that right now. I'm slowly losing weight because I, oh, gosh, round. Horrible shape. But, but, Horrible but, shape. But trip out when I said, tell him about the time that I almost killed you or I almost got him killed. And he's oh, which one? <laughs> yeah. What's, what's time? I'm yeah, losing man, count. Listen. We had some wild times, or we still have wild times. Thank you, MD. She's out already, right? MD's gone. Yeah, she's because uh, uh, we're still trying to. Now I'm kind of curious. Uh, Julie says she got a ban. A ban from what? Uh, from what? What happened? Banned or ban? 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 What? I don't understand. That's Australian for English. I don't understand. Uh, Australians have a very different uh, usage of some words, and yes, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a little I confusing, think. and for some of us that speak English, it's even harder to understand. So, I want to go to Australia one day. One day, that yeah, could be a sign. Uh, Julie said that uh, the women outnumber men two to one, and they love Americans. Looks like I'm going sooner. Yeah, even chubby ones. Ernie's like, I'm moving to Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, good luck playing the Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah get Ernie's so fun. Something else, I'm telling you. He's a special <laughs> person, man. Hey, I love having fun, man. That's what life's now, all about, man. 
Aren't you Why, also a you know, comedian? You, you can look at life in a negative light, or you can look at it in a positive light. Well, it's, here it comes. Your mindset. What? No. That's the way you view life. The way you think is how you live. If you think everything's negative, guess what you're going to fucking live as? Fucking negative. negative. Yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier when we were doing this show and bringing up, like, different topics that are very serious about our community. It's going to be... We've got to be able to still be lighthearted and have fun like this, just kind of shooting shit, so to speak, occasionally, because... I mean, who's going to want to sit there and go, yeah, I just watched this depressing show, now I'm going to go to this depressing show, and oh, hey, look, another depressing show. I got a few. Show. I got a few. I mean, I can't, like, be, like, I, I don't, I don't yeah, I mean, watch TV anymore. I don't watch the news. I gave up oh, on the news. Oh, man, I stopped I watching that a long time ago. I just read. I read the news, and even then, uh, you know, bias reporting is still pretty... You know, yeah, and I mean, I just I read the facts. You've got to separate opinion from facts, and you just go from there, man. I mean, I don't, I don't. Well, you know, my my thing with that is that listen, you know, when politics get involved with anything, it pollutes it, man. It, it honestly does, and yep. I think we just need to learn how to accept that we are all different, and that's okay. But that shouldn't be pointed out to divide us does that make sense absolutely i think um you know it's interesting because one of the things that was brought up on the meeting with ramon's walk is the political issue right so right now everybody seems to be if you are a democrat you're this and they have pigeonholed you as that and if right. you are a Republican, you must be right. You're tr you're just as bad as Trump or whatever that you know. And there's like no in between. Like I remember when I was a kid growing up, it didn't matter like where you were. You're like, all right, cool. Uh, that dude does that, and this one over here, he likes this. But uh, we're gonna go hang out at a bar, have a drink. I really don't care what they do later on. You know. But yeah, you know, it, it's ridiculous where we're at. So now thinking about the walk. In comes the political issue. Correct. Well, see, here's the thing with that. And with me, it's not, you know, left or right. This is about what's right. You know, does that make sense? What's right or wrong? You know, it's wrong for somebody to be kicked out or, like, just thrown away, you know, that served our country, man. These guys were willing to sacrifice their life. You know, for instance, if the guy would have died in combat, he would have had you know, a military burial, you know, he would have been treated like a hero. But yes, he got in trouble, you know, those some issues. And I'm not saying what they did was right. What I'm saying is that they need help. But to just Correct. get rid of the guy and throw him in another country and be like, you know, fuck off, that's not right. You know, it doesn't no. matter what the side of politics you are. If it's fucking wrong, it's wrong. And that's what we need to go to. Yeah, and now, uh, you know, the... I mean, how many other issues? Okay, here's we got the common one, right? We got homelessness, suicide, drug addiction, drug addiction. Yeah. Then we have, you know, now we have the deportation. What other issues are we missing? Incarceration. Okay. How about yeah. how about the fact that we need an attorney to get our benefits? Yeah, okay. that's fucked up. I said, if you want something that comes up that shit our veterans have to deal with is the fact that there are attorneys who specialize in veterans benefits, disability benefits. I mean, if that doesn't spell bullshit, I don't fucking know what does. Raymond, good evening. Hey, Raymond. How are you? Good luck. I like that. That's yeah. a pretty cool name. That's pretty sweet. Well, yeah, I mean, the issues are... And then... What other issues are going to, right, we're, this is America, we've been, like, we're constantly at war, right, we're constantly doing fighting, whatever it is. Ramon mentioned it earlier. What other issues are going to come around later on that we don't you know, know about? One of the things that I've been wanting to really look into, and Ernie sent me a video, a little video clip the other day, it was referring a lot to the vaccines and whatnot, but I think it was going back to... Uh, you know, the studies that have been conducted and what happens to our service members after, you know, they test all this junk on us. Um, Sergeant Major Mackey. That oh, right there. Okay. Hold there on. Time out. That is my hero. Like, 
hands down, mm -hmm. Batman is the yeah. Uh, Sergeant Major Mackey <laughs> is the Marine that I was injured with um, on December twenty third, two thousand and nine, in Afghanistan. And did you know he was at the Beirut bombing in Lebanon? Holy shit! Just so you know how long that guy's career spanned. <laughs> like, Damn. When I first saw that, I was like, "There's no way." No. He's going to tell me he was a staff sergeant already. But <laughs> Very rude. I don't know how he wasn't the sergeant major of the Marine Corps at one point. Like, wow. I've that's interesting. It, he's the uh, first Marine. You, this Ramon, you know, uh, don't wait. make me blush. You know the shooting badges, right? Right, we have our rifle and pistol badges, and then there's yeah. the competition badges that, like, you've never seen. And the and the army the they have gold a, one. In the army, they have a grenade badge. So you oh, yeah, right. You got you got to throw the grenade, right? Okay. Well, Sergeant Major Mackey has like the actual like gold shooting badge as well for like competition shoot. I'm like, wait, that thing exists? That's real? Like, yep. Oh, you're the PFC. The there you go. Oh, yeah, you're not the PFC when he was in Beirut. You're not that old. That was a baby was when 80 Two. what year was that? Sorry, major 88? 82. Early early eighties. Yeah, so it makes Eight. sense. You know, it's a twenty some year span. Yeah, it makes sense. PFC and this our major. I mean, yeah, so 82, 92, there's ten years. Let's hit two thousand two. That's twenty that's twenty years right there. Uh, he's and he by the way, he's still going, right? Like he's like it's not like the deployments end. How many countries he went to that are no longer countries? Yeah, no shit. Right, so the Soviet <laughs> Union was still up and going at that time. 83. Okay, 83. Oh. I apologize. Sorry, we, I got that in my um, history lessons in boot camp, but it's been such a long time for me. Like I mean, 25 Jesus. years. I mean, that's, I, when I read a bio on him once because it's funny to see like – He's just the wrong person to piss off because he is going to fix some problems if he has to. Like, it's just not the guy to piss off. And uh, so if he has to, he's going to drag the media into it. And so there's like a bio I remember seeing of him once. It's like, so he's been to some 80 different countries in his 30-year Marine Corps career, some of which are no longer countries. Fuck. That's crazy. <laughs> Deployed God knows how many times. And that's not just the combat deployments. That's that's dedication, man. That's fucking I'm, dedicated. I, that guy no, is uh it is impressive. Can't question his fucking his no, fucking and he's, dedication. And you know what's funny is and or it's not funny, but it's I wonder about this. So we're talking about issues. Look at when you you look at the the difference in in uh, like his injuries versus mine, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm essentially like from the outside looking in, I'm fine. Sergeant Major Mackey is instantly a dual entity. He is actually awake and conscious the entire freaking time, and I am just out freaking cold. Eventually, like I think died on a helicopter or something. I don't know. That's weird. Wow. Um, and then it, it's him that's like bringing me back to life. So later on, I, um... when he gets to Bethesda, he's instantly like his mind says, "All right, we're doing this. We're, you know, we're rehabbing. We're going to fix some problems. We're going to solve some shit." Right. Then there's me, where people are like, you know, I'm much younger at the time of the injury. Um, People are trying to tell me some five, six months later, hey, man, you got a problem. You might want to like, no, nah, I'm Marine. I'm big, bad, and tough. Screw you guys. You have the life experience of what he had at that point, right? My life experience of like my woo, two deployments, yay, to a country that's still a country. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever exist one day. That's actually really cool to think about. You um, mentioned, hey, Radio, you mentioned Sergeant Major Mackey when you were uh, – uh, I guess paying tribute to one of uh, one of the Marines that didn't come yes. home. Uh, so Sergeant Chris Urbeck is a Marine that I only met when I got to Afghanistan. So I didn't know him prior to. 
Um, and anyone that knows me really well, especially when I was in the Marine Corps, I'm like the biggest advocate for Anglico and what we do. And I will go and talk anyone's ear off all day long about Anglico and how glorious we are. So somehow, when I was at their main base, Fiddler's Green, where Sergeant Major Mackey was the battalion Sergeant Major for 310, uh, I come across this guy, Sergeant Urbit. And I'm like, hey, man, let me tell you what Anglico does. And so every time I'd be back there, that's – and and then every time he'd be at where we were at, you know, CP Huskers, he'd always be giving me crap about, are you going to tell me about Anglico? Hell, yeah, I am. <laughs> I need you over here. And uh, so that day, um, him and uh, Corman, Doc Latham, are responsible for – uh, saving Sergeant Major Mackey's life. Like, as he's cracking jokes the whole time. Like that. I can only imagine what they were going through. And Sergeant Major Mackey's over here just rattling off joke after joke, bro. Salt <laughs> dog right there. I, I, hey. They don't make them like that anymore. There's some people. But uh, no, he was. In the short amount of time that I had known him, Chris was, uh, he's every bit the person that you wish and want to be. Like, this is a guy that's, the talk stole your COVID <laughs> remember that. He's that guy it's you all... want to go to battle, man. You want to take into battle, you know? Yeah, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, you're one hundred percent correct. That's too funny. I didn't know he stole your Copenhagen. <laughs> and mind you, Sergeant Major Mackey and I, you know, I was there with my four man team as their radio guy, and I'm there in, to support and just do whatever it is that we're doing. I didn't know Sergeant Major Mackey prior. I didn't fall under his command and stuff, so. I'm out with his guys at this tiny little shithole, and our fate intertwines that day. When and I actually, I still haven't met him in person, uh, but I got in contact with him almost two years ago, uh, close to the 10 year anniversary of when we were uh, injured. And I'm like, all right, it's time to like reach out to him, you know, because he always would mention like, yeah, I was injured with like this other guy. And, well. Hey, how's it going on that other guy? Uh, sorry, I'm not cooler. Uh, Hi, other guy. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I got, I, I'm telling you right now, when you, if you're, you got to be stuck with someone the rest of your life, I definitely got the good end of this deal. He got the shit end of the stick on that one. Just saying. <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> so, actually, Sergeant Major, do you, do you he's got this, I remember correctly, he has like a, a wheelchair that is like a tank. I sort of got, it's like, it's got like a tank track on it. What? We're bringing that out. Yeah, I, I saw a picture of this thing and he's got like, a, 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 I don't know, maybe, sorry, Major, if you're still here, could you explain that damn thing? He's got like his own personal, like, it, it's like a tank. It's It's him. <laughs> In his own little personal mini tank. <laughs> yeah. He also might have, uh, someone might have crossed him the wrong way once recently, and that didn't end well for that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ernie, whatever you're doing is like really loud. What is It's that? Ernie. That's what he does. He's a comedian. Yeah. So now, He's just a loud guy. Pop now. Movie. We still haven't, we're planning this whole thing. We still haven't found exactly, right? We got, holy crap, Los Angeles to vaguely kind of Los Angeles, Long Beach. Um, yeah. To, What's going to be? Yeah, uh, the track chair. Do you still have, it's like a tank. The track chair. Hey, Star Major, send post, post a picture. That yeah, we need a picture. Awesome. I think he has a picture on his Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. It's like a damn tank. I want one. But is he sitting on a whoopee cushion or something? I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Um, 
What are you even walking? Oh. Hey, Jesus, freaking Ernie. What are we talking about? Uh, I, uh, we I thought you sat on a whoopee cushion or something. So we're planning we're planning the walk. We're in the beginning phases. We've kind of got some stuff together. We had our meeting today. We're try, trying to see if Oscar's going to be on board. we got to get some others on board as well. Uh, Sergeant Major Mackey actually is... Um, uh, he could bring up a lot is in regards to like veterans issues because he is... He's gotten pretty good at uh, spearheading some stuff. I'm actually going to have to pick his brain a little bit here. There you go, logistics. Ernie, what are you doing? He's, I'm walking. He's talking logistics. I'm horrible at logistics. Sorry, Major, where, where are you located at? If you don't mind me asking. How you doing? I, I'm good, thank you for asking, Ernie. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think that I think that the best approach is obviously we're going to need one whole team uh, for the walk itself. And then we need to coordinate with different groups along the way to set up this, uh, you know, the rallies or, or whatnot. So what is what's going on? I don't know what's beeping. That's not me. He, he quickly was like, nope, not me. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Is it my running low on battery or what? No, I'm good. Something you got the gold microphone there, buddy. I'm, Jacksonville, I'm, North Carolina. That guy. Oh is... boy. The gold microphone. He is marine through and through. <laughs> wow. I got to give that to Marines. I mean, I'm just saying. So, I, I actually, I'm going to talk to talk to Sergeant Major here about. Uh, other issues as well because logistically I mean he he would know a thing or two because he's definitely seen a thing seen well a, I've seen a thing or two he's, he's, th he's seen a thing or like 12 or 24 or 40 oh, yeah. he's yeah definitely been around the world a few times oh, it's interesting it's I've interesting never even been on a navy ship Oh my God! You don't want to. You mean a navy boat? Yeah, you don't want to be. You don't want to trust me. It's not fun and not, not enjoyable. I mean, I I, I, that, I didn't even get to use my Uber properly. I like that's horrible. I it's four e six. Air tell you, Force was my that I had on when you're on ship. Everyone does field day, right? Okay. And cool, you know, we have a detachment of Marines on the ship, and I am the sergeant on that ship, on that detachment. And um, some uh, sailor E5, E6 comes over and he says, or an E4, I don't remember. He says, hey, sergeant, it's field day. And I said, yep, aren't my uh, men already on it? And he's like, Ships uh, yeah, on ship we all clean. You guys have the you guys have the head, and my reaction is I went fucking di on him, and the look on his face was he Good was reaction. terrified. He was three times my size, by the way. And he ah, he, everyone's afraid of a Marine Corps drill instructor. It doesn't matter. He how. was not ready for that. <laughs> so what happened is I had just finished the night shift. I did the night shift. I went and hit the rack. And I told my guys, I told my PFCs and the Lance Corporals, hey, you guys take care of the head, please. I'm going to get some sleep. And this guy came and woke me up. And it was not pretty. So I was pacing him around in my underwear, no shoes, no socks, no shirt. Going no off. service. <laughs> I told me, hey, man, you don't, you don't do that shit. You know, sergeants don't fucking clean heads. You don't do any of that shit. That's dumb. You tried to school me, and I didn't work out. We lost yeah. Ernie. That's okay. We lost Ernie. That's okay. We'll talk to Ernie next week. Jesus Christ, that was a noisy situation. Ernie is, uh, Ernie can, uh, Ernie's fun. Ernie's, Ernie's fun. Guy, man. I enjoy Ernie's hanging out with him. Just, you know, so beginning stages, it's going to be interesting. Next week, we're going to have more. We're going to have a guest on next week. We're actually going to start posting because it's only week two. We're working out some kinks here, people. We're actually going to yeah, start so posting about the show now because we got to have, like, we're going to, Right, so that's gonna be fun, because um, there's gonna be a lot going on. We've got a lot of cool things coming up here with uh, VRS and everything on the network. Um, the bar is still the bar. Terrell is still uh, 
live from his basement usually that is uh that bar was pretty fun i had a good time on it it's uh i actually have decided that every saturday oh god i got i drank a lot last saturday i have not done shots in god knows how long and they got me to drink it was also my birthday so they were like ah oh why is radio not wasted and i was like uh radio doesn't really drink huh what how old uh 37 37 yeah yeah man i mean i i'm i I was pretty hot for being 37 yeah i didn't think you were i didn't think you were 37 you're pretty good man holding it well (laughs) yeah i mean it's we're only seeing like this much of me right now the the yeah the (laughs) the the gut ah Uh, that's normal that's we're getting there I'm losing the weight. I'm trying to. I've got to because you know what? I gotta stay healthy because I'm not exactly the world's greatest eater. Mm-hmm. So yeah, gotta do some stuff to like. Yeah. I want to be in shape. Care. I don't want to like. I don't want to leave here any sooner than I have to. I kind of realize I like hanging out in this place. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you also want to get there. You know, you want to live a good quality of life. You know, when you get there to an older age and, you know, obese and sickness and obesity and sickness and all that other stuff. I mean, how it's not a good it's not a good life. I and mean, I, I don't know. I want to go out drinking, smoking and dancing. I don't want to go out like, you know, on a hospital bed. Like, I wonder. Is that an issue that veterans have? What's that? that? You you brought it up in obesity. Yeah. That's one. I mean, just a change in lifestyle. Who is old? <laughs> like, yes, I made your Me? That guy, the 37-year-old is old. Me? Me. But, yeah, no, I, I'm actually curious about that. Is obesity a problem within the veteran community? Uh, it might be. I don't know. It's something to look up. I'm just because... telling you, I believe that yeah. all the crap that's pumped into our system has an adverse effect on our system the way our body reacts to just about everything um, from food to drinks to, I mean, we just, to other medication. Um, And I think that the government might be aware of some of these issues. And I also think that they've also turned a blind eye to a lot of these issues and having done their uh, necessary legwork or studies or whatever to look into what, these vaccines and and all this other stuff they put in our bodies, uh, what the you know the negative the side effects uh, that come from it. So I think that there's a lot more to this. I don't think that this is just you know all PTSD. I think a lot of it and neurological issues are affected. Our minds are affected. Hmm. Obesity not so much. Overweight yes. Well, according to Marine Corps standards, we're all fat asses. <laughs> so- yeah. Although their new physical fitness test, I got to actually hand it to the Marine Corps. It's actually pretty damn good. Okay. Yeah, no longer are the days of the uh, 20 pull ups. You got to do 23 now for a max. And it's dependent on your age. Wow. Uh, and you, uh, the minimum requirement is no longer three, it's four. Sure, that's good. If you couldn't do four push ups, uh, four pull ups, get out of here, man. Yeah. So. so, but falling in line with other branches of service. They wanted to give you the option, right? Like, did you want to ride a bike or did you want to run? One of those? No. So the Marine Corps said, okay, Uh, you can choose pull-ups or push-ups, but if you choose push-ups, we're going to dock you 30 points on your score. (laughs) So the, uh, you can only get like 270, yeah, math for Marines. 270 is the highest you could get. Wow. Wow. Like, that's pretty impressive, actually. I was like, oh. Okay. You know what? At my age, I think that riding a bike is much more. I thought riding a bike was better. And then I did that 25-mile bike ride, and I, uh, I almost died. I so. think next year, we do ride the line. That's yeah. <laughs> Whatever works, man. I'm down. I mean, I'm telling you, even 35 miles on a bike is a real pain in the ass. Rowing is a bitch. Rowing is a bitch. Yes, it is. Yes, I it don't is. care what anyone said. Like, no. Like, 
Those are, what is it, the Olympic thing where they, oh, God, that, yeah, that's. Yeah, that, that kicks up. my ass. I don't care how, what kind of shape I'm in. That is not a pleasant exercise. Yeah. So, we are uh, going to head out. An hour and a half. Good mark. I like it. Um, next week, week number three, we're going to have some fun stuff. We're going to start posting about it shortly. So we're going to create a bunch of other things as well. Tasks uh, for next week. Uh, the first leg of the walk will be laid out. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll announce the first leg uh, location and the first maybe five days until we leave California and get into Arizona. So that will be ready. Uh, locations, stopping points, approximate mileage per day. Uh, hopefully we'll have an answer from Oscar by then. I'm going to call as soon as we hang up. I need to know if you're going to be my safety vehicle driver at less than one mile per hour. I just need him to be looking out for me. I yes. trust him with my life. Yes, you do. Because oh. the amount of times he had to come save you. Uh, Ramon, turn left. And Ramon goes right. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, Ramon's calling me on the phone. He's in like somewhere in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico. Not the home state. Well, it is the home state. Kind of a Sergeant Major Mackey, right? Yeah, I think he was I'm gonna send from you, New Mexico. I'm going to send you one of the videos of the one of the times that I found the trail and I had to use a smuggler route that I found to get me back to safety. I actually took video of it. I would love <laughs> to see that. That would be great. I'll so send everyone, it to you. We can play it next week. Yeah, absolutely. That will be great. Sergeant Major Mackey, thank you. We're going to have to bring him on too because Sergeant Major Mackey is awesome. Yeah. Hey, Sergeant Major, if you're on next week, let's have a conversation. Absolutely. And uh, everyone else that was there, thank you. Have fun. Have a good night. Everyone take care of yourself. And, uh, oh, my cat decided to show up. Look at that. Oh, wait, wrong side. It's that side. Pixel, hey, how's it going? Your blanket's that way. Later. <laughs>